clever Omega. Learn to keep the peace. Ain't no way you guys spent three months animating this scene when you could have been animating the whole movie better. I'm not gonna be nice. Alpha and Omega is an extremely big failure and I don't even need to say that. A lot of people know about this movie. They know how bad it is. But I really want to go back and really understand why I think it's so bad. It was released in the 2010s. And if you know anything about the 2010 era of like animation and movies in general, that was when 3D was kind of popping. And so if you see a lot of scenes in Alpha and Omega to where like, I don't know, shots kind of pop up at you, that's the reason why. 3D was a very big gimmick at the time and it makes it very hard to believe this wasn't anything but a cash grab, especially considering Lily's structure. Especially Kate. Kate doesn't really have any really, I guess, eye drawing features in the movie, except for her eyelashes, which, you know, whatever, everybody in like the 2010s and even now sort of like put eyelashes on feminine characters and that's how they draw people towards them. But more so the title screen and the box office art. You can see Kate in a very, I'm just gonna say seductive way because I don't know how else to explain it. These two things in general make it a very hard case to believe that this was anything more than a cash grab. I'm super sorry. But to be completely honest, I feel like a lot of the failures and shortcomings of this movie kind of rely on the leadership of this whole thing and also the animation, I can't lie. The animation in this movie is extremely horrid. Like when I say I don't like 3D animated films, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Not only is the movie extremely blurry when characters are in motion or background elements are moving very quickly in the background, like, it's extremely nauseating to look at this fucking movie, but also just, uh, the hair. The hair on these characters, so appalling. The hair on these characters are super bouncy, and I would say they have jiggle physics, but I don't think that's true. I just think they're bouncing constantly because no matter what they're doing, they're just moving constantly, flowing, and like your eyes are targeted to the back of their heads, just looking at this massive amounts of hair for no reason nothing else nothing else has this amount of hair nothing else on their body has this amount of hair it's just the top of their heads have this human hair and it's disgusting the only character that looks distinct and good is lily and that's because she's got some seen hair going on and i think she looks actually somewhat decent in this sort of style this 3d animation the rest of these characters are so uninspired and so lackluster in design it's just like they took normal wolves and they just gave them twilight hair because i don't know vampires werewolves were cool back then but moving away from the characters the background assets and designs of the environments are just so lackluster and so unappealing to be in Jasper I am more than sure this is a drawn background and it contrasts so hard with the 3d you have no idea I don't think a single one of these environments or backgrounds are beautiful or good to look at they're just very bland very basic they're in a forest which they can do they you can like make things look good in a forest even though like they're like uh, there's gonna be like a lot of trees it's gonna be homogenized by trees and grass but like you can make it look good no matter what it's no wonder they have so much motion blur because they don't want people to see this shit anyway let's go on to the music which i oh. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. On paper and in theory, I think them melodically hallowing isn't so bad. I think the execution was the bad thing because the, like, I, th I think of this scene as like, sort of like, uh, what's it called? Like a, 
scatting. That's what it's called. And I don't mean the other thing. This music sort of reminds me of scatting to where like, you know, think of Tarzan to where they're uh, breaking the camp or whatever like that. And they're going, scabadoo, scabadoo, I don't really want to sing it. But yeah, they're going like that. And so I think in theory, it sounds like they could sort of translate that to a wolf hallowing but the way they went about it it was fucking disgusting especially considering this might be an innuendo to having sex or at least being very romantically close to each other i i don't know about that now as for the score i actually don't think the score is that bad you get to hear a lot of motifs a lot of melodies from the uh very start and it just continues throughout the whole movie i don't think it's bad i think the main direction and the main flaws here rely on the animation and the story. And let's talk about the story. <laughs> this is a romance comedy and it follows two characters named Humphrey and Kate. Humphrey is an Omega, which we get to see in the intro. Same with Kate. Uh, Kate is a Alpha, excuse me. But um, you get to learn a lot about them within the first like 10 minutes of the movie, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's mainly the way they execute it. This, this movie has a huge tonal problem and a huge issue with the animation, which like brings, uh, brings all these issues to light. But yeah, Omegas are very carefree, very uh, chill, very relaxed. And Alphas, I hate saying the word Alphas in 2023, but here we are. Alphas are very commanding and very, they take on the leadership role. And the main issue I kind of have with this is that the Alphas, who are supposed to be very commanding and like, um, I guess very serious in their tone, they aren't that whatsoever. They have moments to where they can be serious, but a lot of this movie relies on very comedic moments and like lighthearted tones. Like these alphas for the most part get sort of like bunched into that. And so you never take them serious. Even the mother, the mother who is kind of a Karen, I hate saying the word Karen, but like that's what she fucking is. If any of you wolves have hurt my daughter, I will personally rip out your eyes and shove them down your throat so you can see my claws tear your carcass open! Um, Mom? Not now, dear. Mommy's in a rage. <laughs> My mom when the clearance item isn't on clearance. Yeah, the mother throughout this movie basically gets turned into a joke and we can't really take anything serious here. The main plot of this story is that Kate is meant to marry Gunther or whoever the fuck the other wolf is on this other territorial side. It's like a territorial sort of issue. I wouldn't say it's like racism at all because I think it's kind of stupid to say this is racism when it, it's clearly not. Clearly... They want to unite like a whole pack of wolves, so I don't think like that's racism. If it was racism in my eyes, it would basically be saying, oh, we are superior to you, not saying, oh, why don't we unite the packs? Like, I think this is just a territorial issue. Anyway, these two wolf packs from different territories, the East and I'm guessing the West, have conflict because they are running out of food, which doesn't make sense because at the start of the movie, there's a stampede that happens with a bunch of caribou or whatever the fuck it is. And apparently that never gets talked about. Like, if they're running out of food, then why was there a whole herd of caribou that were gonna trample you down? The stampede isn't limited to the intro, it's actually the climax. It is shown, all these caribou are shown at the climax. So apparently food is not an issue here. So you guys are just lying about this. But yeah, that's the main plot where the story story, the romance side comes in is that Humphrey and Kate get kidnapped in broad daylight. Well, I mean, it's moonlight, broad moonlight, but that doesn't really sound good to say. They get kidnapped by humans and taken to Canada, I believe, to repopulate. I, sure, sure, it's a story. Then the rest of the story is them basically trying to get home. They meet these geese, these uh, ducks or whatever like that, and they basically guide their way back to Jasper Park. I forgot where the fuck it was it doesn't matter and throughout their travels they start to get connected and fall in love it's a basic little 
bonding story it's not anything crazy and there's just a lot of filler so there's not much to talk about besides the main point uh plot points even at the end to where kate takes quote unquote responsibility to be forcefully married to this person she doesn't want to in order to unite the packs and she stops that to say oh i'm in love with humphrey actually there is just no meaning no real believability if that's even a word it, it basically might as well be a word because this movie is not real so i might as well be using fake words <laughs> but throughout the movie they present these very serious moments that i guess you're supposed to take seriously but then they either add comedy or they add very piss poor animation that makes the whole scene just fall apart and not impact anybody you're getting married yes um isn't it great? No more fighting during hunts, no more scraps and bones at dinner time. We're going to unite the packs. Literally, the way these wolves are moving in the background makes this scene so fucking funny. The animation is just so blurry and so bad to where it's so irritating to look at. It's not refreshing in any sort of sense. The tonal issues are so big and so apparent to where what am I supposed to get from this movie? I don't get anything from this movie. No jokes land, nothing. No, the serious moments don't feel serious. I don't know what to get from this movie. And it's very much coated with a layer of cringe that makes it impossible to continue watching throughout. Like, I gotta say, this movie just is a trifecta of issues. And it spawns seven or eight sequels from a different animation company. I think, like, throughout the second or third one, Crest Animation became bankrupt, which kind of makes sense. I'm not gonna lie. I don't, like, I don't, like, bragging about any of that. But, like, yeah, it makes sense when you make products like this. But, yeah, those seven or eight sequels make it very hard to believe this was anything more than just a cash grab. They were just looking to capitalize on a certain community which i don't think they hit that community at all um, most furries i talk to i'm not a furry which i gotta say a million times because people don't fucking believe me but yeah i'm not a furry most furries i've talked to fucking hate this movie and they think it's kind of just shitty as hell so I really don't know what this movie was really for, who it was really for. It very much feels like this movie was rushed out and very much meant to be a cash grab in shovelware. Like, I think they should have had more time if they actually cared about making a very good story, which I believe this could have been a decent movie at the very least. They could have focused more on animation, um, focused more on the story, the holes in it. And just the comedy in general but no they didn't and this is the first movie i am actually going to give a solid zero i see no purpose in this movie i see no redeemable qualities and even though it's free i don't think anybody should watch this movie i'm so sorry that's all i have to say anyway how's it going pups it's a canine and i'm out um, you two are undomesticated uh, partners. <laughs> Eddie, please don't be rude. So you two are uh, boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> you are an item. Oh, so that's where the real alphas are—the ones who hate women.